Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have another thrift haul for you. This one doesn't have very many items to, that I have to paint. So I'm going to show you what I thrifted. I love to go thrifting and it just makes me so giddy when I find some of these items that I can pass on the deals to you. So I have a really good thrift store that has some fantastic prices and hopefully I can pass them on to you with a little bit of a shipping cost too. You know, right now shipping costs are crazy. So some of the items had to go up just a little bit from where they were because my shipping is going up. So you're not paying as much for shipping as I have to pay. So I'm just trying to make a little bit of that up. So I hope you understand. If you like this video, hit the subscribe. So we're gonna get on to the thrift haul and then I have a little painting project I'm going to share with you. So the first thing up, it's the biggest thing in the house, is this old vintage print that is, it must be like decoupage down to this board, but you wouldn't even know it. There is not any part of this edge that is peeling off whatsoever. So this print was hanging above my mom and dad's bed when I was a little kid. And I seen this in the thrift store. I left it there the first time. And then the next time I went back, I picked it up. I already have one. My girlfriend gave me one many, many years ago. And this one, I just couldn't leave it there. I got this for 67 cents. And I'm going to leave it as is. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit because it is kind of grody up there. I might use a little dark and decrepit on it. It does have some scratches in the surface of it, but I'm thinking a little clear wax and dark wax might just smooth those right over. I did take some pictures of the dings and scratches in the listing. So if you're interested, make sure you check out all the pictures. It has some really good crazing on it too. Look at that crazing. It's called, I believe it's called The Guardian. These mugs, they are from Corel Coordinates. And there are four of them. The pattern is called watercolors. And who wouldn't like that pattern, that green watercolor look with all those flowers on there? I'm selling them in a set of two. I have two sets, so I have four cups. They were 47 cents for me. I'm passing them on as a good deal. They're from Corel Coordinates Stoneware. They are a really good cup. This item is my favorite and I priced it kind of high because I really like it and it, I think it's really special. I haven't been able to find it online. If you can find it online, just let me know. 47 cents for this little ginger vase. It's blue and white, has a blue and white pattern all the way around it. There are no chips, cracks, anything. There are no markings on the bottom, but it is definitely some type of vintage porcelain that it, it's just good. It's just really good. And who doesn't like the word ginger on there? It's, I love it. Next up, a blue pitcher. I do like the color of this blue pitcher. It would look really pretty with some flowers in it when you pick them out of your garden. I might have to do that tomorrow. Saturdays are my bring fresh flowers in. 97 cents, there is no markings on the bottom. It's just a pretty blue pitcher. No chips, no cracks. Here is a flower pot and it looks like a mug. It has a plug in the bottom and it has gather. I have two of them. They look like concrete. And I'm gonna show you putting a plant in here because I think that's what you'd wanna do with it, is put a plant in them. So let me grab the plant. Okay, here it is with, this is called a wire vine or an angel vine. 
This has become a big favorite of mine. You can either put a hoop in here and train it to go around the hoop, or you can just let it be wild. This one, I just happened to let it be wild. Its container fits right into this mug and it's super cute. This is concrete-like, it is not sealed, so it's got that really rough concrete-like feel to it. And if they're gonna ship as is, you can probably seal this if you're gonna put it outside in your garden. You probably wanna give it a good seal so that the rain just repels right off versus soaking in. I have these, these are called GMI, vintage enamel bowls and they this one has a chip in it these are orange and blue has a silver rim around it does have some wear in the inside i feel like these had a plastic lid that went over the top of them but there was no plastic lid lids i think that if i remember right i think those lids were probably made pretty cheap and they were cracked anytime i ever seen them at someone's house they were cracked I have two of this pattern and then I have this pastel fruit pattern. There's no design on the back and then this rose pattern and they were 27 cents for it, these cans. What a stinking good deal, 27 cents for these. And I just think they're so cute. So those are listed up on my website. Here's a blue bowl. Looks like a waffle cone on the outside all the way around. It was 47 cents. It is called Dover and York bowl. I love the color of it. I love the size of it. It's a good cereal bowl or an ice cream bowl. Since it does look like a waffle cone, you might want to put your ice cream in there. It's a really nice size, or you can float a flower in there, use it to put some fruit on your table. It's pretty. And that pattern is so glimmery. I like it. Next up, this is Replacements LTD. This is a metal eight inch baker pan and it's called Poppies on Blue. It has a pattern on all four sides and it is 97 cents. It has the rim around the top. It does have a little bit of damage on the rim, which adds to the character, but this pan is so clean you could still bake in it. I almost ba baked some cornbread in here last Sunday when we had our Father's Day cookout uh, because I needed an eight inch baking pan for a cornbread mix. And I almost came out here and grabbed this eight inch baker, but I didn't. So you could totally put your cornbread in here and bake that up. They normally sell for $20. It is from Replacements LTD and it is called Poppies on Blue. I have this breadboard that I picked up. It was $1.97 for this breadboard. It was in pretty rough shape, like you probably wouldn't want to use it on both sides. So I'm going to keep this side like that in case you do want to use it in your kitchen. And on this side, I've already painted it yellow and we're going to use this textured wallpaper that I've shown you before that I got at a thrift store. It is textured wallpaper and I'm going to show you how I use it on this breadboard. And then I also have this sign which came with from the thrift store with a wire hanger that I have painted in this old 57 color. This is DIY paint. And if you need DIY paint, you can head on over to thepaintedphotographer.com and order it up and I'll ship it right to your front door. I have four different designs of the textured wallpaper. This one is very limited because this was my thrifted one and I only had so much of it. So this one's very limited. It's called Lines. This one is called Paisley. And it comes 
in a sheet about the size of a transfer and then I fold it in quarters. This one is called Summer. It kind of reminds me of the Moroccan inlay or the Bella stamp. This one is called Connie. So this one I've already used once and I used it right here on this plain old board with some DIY paint. This one is lines. This one is lines. And this one is lines. And I painted the hollyhocks. You wanna see how I painted them and used that textured wallpaper? I'll show you right now. This is a thrifted board that I got. It had a wire hanger on it, which is something I usually watch for. Boards are hard to come by, especially when they have their own hanger. I painted in this old 57, so now I have my breadboard and my other board, and I have this piece of wallpaper, and this one is called Summer. And I've used it already once. It'll come folded up just like that. I'm going to take some of that old 57 and the yellow is already dry, but I'm gonna make sure that this paint is wet when I put it on here. So there's a little old 57, there's some mint chip, and then there's also that bright gold yellow color. And I use a separate paintbrush for that color since it is so different. And I just go and sporadically put this on. This is a background for a hollyhock painting that I'm going to do. So it doesn't really matter how you put it on. It's the background and no matter what you do, it's going to look good. So go ahead and put those colors on there. And then you're going to take the wallpaper and put it right on top of the wet paint. And the image of the wallpaper is going to stay right onto the board and give you some texture for that painting. So I take the board and I flip it upside down so I can kind of get it halfway straight on that breadboard. I push and then I go ahead and flip it over. And using the IOD brayer really helps to make a good adhesion from the wallpaper to the board, giving it lots of nice texture. Then peel that paper off and you have a perfect design. To use this paper a second time, you can just go ahead and spritz it with your water bottle and activate that DIY paint again. And you can see how I'm not even going over the entire breadboard, just a little piece of it and adding a little bit more texture on the top. We're gonna add a little bit more texture on the bottom and we're just going to keep adding some more texture however we want until we get the look that we like. You can also use the textured wallpaper like a stamp. So we're going to paint the textured wallpaper. It is paintable wallpaper. So we're going to go ahead and put some of that yellow on there and get it nice and wet, adding a couple more of the green colors to go on top of there as well. And then we're going to stamp this onto the board, getting another textured design. You can use these wallpapers over a gazillion times and the more colors that you have on this wallpaper, the better your imprint is going to be.
All right, we got our breadboard all painted, um, textured wallpaper on there. And now we're going to, it's been drying. Now we're gonna paint some hollyhocks on there. And I'm gonna try and teach you as best I know how, but I usually just paint. And I don't pay attention to how too much works out. So I'll try and get my painting palette in here for you so you can see how I mix things. This is aviary. I'm gonna take a little bit of aviary and put it on. This plate is covered with press and seal. So I'm putting some aviary on there. Next is mint chip, which is a lighter green. And then I have making powders. If you have making powders, they can really change the way your paint looks. If you don't have making powders, you can pick them up on my website and they'll really change the look of your paint colors. They're highly pigmented and you can mix them with paint, you can mix them with water, whatever you want. This is pool party. This one was plant lady. This one's pool party because we want a little bit of blue. Who doesn't like a little bit of blue? I have a filbert number four I have all of my colors here. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my aviary with a little bit of Plant Lady, giving it a little bit more green color, a brighter green color, not so brownish looking. And then my hollyhocks are gonna go up this breadboard. So on the bottom here is where I'm going to need my leaves, but I'm gonna flatten out my filbert I'm gonna flatten out my filbert by going back and forth on my palette like this. And then I'm just gonna take the edge of it and slowly squeak down. Hollyhocks are nice and tall, so you want some nice tall hollyhocks on your breadboard. And I usually go in odd numbers, so that's five of them. Now I'm going to come back and just take my filbert and fill in with some leaf patterns. So I point and come down, and I'm turning my brush every which way and just going with that mixture of plant lady and aviary. What's ever right in front of your camera is gonna be nice and big. So that's where these leaves are gonna be really big. And there can be a spot where there's, you don't see any leaves. You can see that background popping through. And then on the hollyhocks, they have little balls that don't bloom quite right away. So you're gonna make them, they get a little bit smaller as they get to the top. So I'm just using the side of my filbert brush to do that. Some of them are like right in front of the stem. So I'm you can just go ahead and touch your brush down. They really don't have to be perfect. Hollyhocks will bloom from the bottom up. So you'll have some of those that are blooming and some that aren't. Then we're gonna go ahead and mix into our mint chip, making that a lighter green. We're, we didn't wash our brush because we want those colors to blend and look good together. So we just went ahead and went into the mint chip a little bit. Now we're gonna add some highlights to these 
leaves. You don't have to get them all, just want that highlight look. You want some of that first color to be showing through. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit the tips of these just to give them a nice contrast with color. There we go. Now I like to add a little blue. This is where pool party comes in. I like a little bit of bluish green. I'm gonna mix it with my aviary and my plant lady. So getting a mix of the green and the blue together. So you're having a greenish blue color. You can add some of that greenish blue to your buds on your hollyhocks if you like. And then we're going to go into the mint chip one more time with a little bit of that blue on my brush, making a lighter pool party aviary mint chip look. Getting some of that bluish color back in there again and highlighting over top of those areas. I am a photographer and I do like the bokeh background. So I'm going to wipe off a lot of my paint and kind of dry brush in my background. which would make you think that's a little bit of the, the hollyhocks growing in the back. But you're not really sure because you can't really see them. I'm gonna make some lines back there just to make it look like they're we're hollyhocks growing back there, and that's what's causing some of that bokeh in the background. Now we're on to the hollyhocks. We need some kissing booth, petticoat pink, a little bit of marquee, which is red. We're gonna use date night. We're gonna use orange you glad. And a little bit of beadboard. First off, we're going to use a little bit of that beadboard on our leaves, bringing some of that highlight out. See how that brings out some of them, the character in the leaves. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and make the hollyhocks. I have kissing booth right here. I'm gonna add some marquee to it to get a nice pinkish orange. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of the orange you glad in there for just a really nice bright orange color. So the hollyhocks would grow wherever your stems are. So it's just right here where the camera would be focused. They're going to be in the foreground. They're gonna be really big. So you're making uh, circle shapes. Hollyhocks are circle shapes. And then there's gonna be some side ones that are blooming up this stem. And we're gonna go, this one right here is going to be also this deep reddish orange one. We're gonna make some that are just pink. And then uh, there'll be a pink one there, a pink one there, and I think we're gonna make that one pink too. So just two reddish orange ones. So now I'm gonna add some petticoat pink to it to get that lighter color. you're gonna kind of see some of the dibs and dabs shining through in through the leaves. So you can just make a few of those. And again, that with a really dry brush, you're gonna come in and make some dry brush blobs in the background. All right, there's that color. Now we're gonna go with some lighter pink ones. So I'm gonna go right into my petticoat pink and a little bit of this date night for a really pretty pink color. Here's our other hollyhock area. We're gonna go put one right here. We're gonna put just a little peak of him here. And right in this area, I want another big full one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this pink color right over top of that other one. Here would be one. You can see my brush turning every which way, like it doesn't, it doesn't stay still in the same area. I just keep turning it. I'll try and go just a little bit slower so you see that with this one. So I'm going that way, this way, turning my brush backwards, forwards. And uh, so there's that nice pink one right there. We're gonna have another side view one right there. It's coming off of that dot right there, that green dot. And uh, there might be a little bit up in here. So this one needs a little bit more lighter pink to it. This one is the lighter pink. He's right over top of that one also. Okay, now I need to add some lighter pink, which is the beadboard color. So you can see the contrast with them. I'm 
Remember those dibs and dabs on the bottom? Some of that color popping through. And that in the background. All right, we're to the yellow queen bee. The queen bee hollyhocks have this little, I don't know, the center is like cone shaped. So we're making those cone shaped centers out of ones where you would see it. Some of them are side views, so you wouldn't see it. All right, now I need to make a little bit of brown, so I'm gonna go in with my red, my yellow, and my green. Getting a little brown. Using all those colors that are still on my palette. And I need to come make the base of that center. be darker down there on the base of it. Now we're gonna let that dry. We are going to Make a few little highlights on our flowers and cover up some of this area that we made the center. It's not totally dry, but dry enough for us to go over it. And if we smear it, that's okay. We just get that dark look to some of our flowers. Now we're taking beadboard and we're going to hit the tops of some of these areas where the blooms would be facing you to make that contrast that it looks like it's the face of the petal and that the petal is facing upward. You're just going to use all of your colors. Just keep mixing them. Keep adding the orange, the red, the pink. It's all about the layers. And if you find that it's something that you don't like, add another layer. You'll get it. All right, I think we've got them flowers down pat. Now I have a little liner brush that I'm gonna go and take some Little Black Dress, which is black color, and mix it with water so it's nice and thin. On 
my Facebook page, this is where they say I have Connie lines. So I take this small brush and I just kind of wiggle it. Making that enhance just a little bit. That hollyhock look, that nice tall stem that they have with the flowers. And then I always just give them a little peek on the top because I think there's, there's not a flower right on the top of them. It just kind of sticks out and you can add some squiggles if you want, making them look nice and tall. So I'm not, I'm barely touching this brush to my board, my breadboard, which is making those lines not be extremely perfect. I don't want perfect. And I want it to skip like it is. So it's skipping nicely, but that's because my hand, my brush barely touches it. My hand is being stable by putting it on the table. Or the board. This painting is still wet, so you can wait for it to dry a bit before doing this step. But since my brush is barely touching it, it doesn't really matter. The hollyhocks have a bunch of light feathery petals that make up that round shape. The more scribbly your lines look, the better it will look. And then, of course, I sign it. There you go. A hollyhock breadboard.
I sealed up both of these paintings with the DIY big top, giving them a nice coat and making sure that I hit the entire area of that board. You also wanna make sure that your painting has been dried for, I usually give it a good 24 hours before I put the big top on it because it is water-based and it will smear that DIY paint if you're not too careful. So go on over it with a clear base coat. And then after that base coat has dried, you can then go in with the dark waxes and add a little bit of age to your painting and I just put it around the edges and then I take a dried piece of paper toweling and go over the breadboard, going over the sides and the back side, giving it that nice brown look. This is actually the black wax, not even brown, and it gives it a really nice tone to the wood. So the next thing that you can do if you put too much black on is go in with the clear wax and it acts as an eraser. So I went over the painting because I really missed those bright colors that I had on there and it takes some of that black wax off. Here it is all finished in its glory. Thanks for watching this quick thrift haul. It really is fun to come on here and share all of my thrifted items with you. And then what I really like to do is ship them to your front door so that you can enjoy them as well. I get really excited about going to the thrift store and hopefully if you go to the thrift store and try and find some of these deals that you get excited after you watch my video too and can't wait to run to that store. So until next time, happy painting.